Hey, you. Coming closer. Closer. Closer still. Okay. I got something I want to tell you. I set the cruise control on my car to go four miles per hour over the speed limit. So that way, I am most frequently traveling at exactly 64 or 69 miles per hour. I thought you'd like to know that information. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Splatoon 2. Last time we saw our first taste of ranked battles uh, with the ink brush. Now we find ourselves back in Octo Cannon once more, passing right through the dimensions and going to back alley cleanup. Suck it up. And I also see a balloon that we gotta take care of later. Hey, I could really use some more data on this weapon. Can you use it for a bit? He is requesting that we do this level with the hero shot. Certain levels are designed around specific weapons and Sheldon will force them on a first playthrough. On repeat playthroughs, you can always challenge them with whatever weapon that you like. That down there is an industrial squeegee. They are as horrifying as they sound. And in fact, they don't pick sides. An industrial sized squeegee, that sucker can clean anything. Even clean up your lives. And if you are evil and there is no cleaning up your life, it just murders you. So yeah, that means it's even capable of cleaning society. I'm gonna do a trick off of that. Well, shooting one-handed off of that jump looks awesome. You don't really get to see that too often. I don't think there's any auto-grinding rails in um in any kind of versus level. I think it's exclusive to Octo Canyon. Dead end, is there any way around this? Uh is okay, that's just a pit down there. I'm gonna go up here and get this armor. Looks like it doesn't notice you when you climb on its back. Interesting. It's, they exist to clean. They will go over to any sort of mess, clean it up, and you can use that to manipulate their movement to your advantage. And all that. Get that too. That highway in the sky, wow. I just love that one-handed shooting animation. I don't think I, if I've seen that before, I don't really remember it. Hit you, bop you. If they go off the cliff, they instantly die too. Uh, no. Hit that. Gotcha. Shot over the shield. That. And you thought you were getting away because you're hiding behind a wall. Well, nope. Aw, little baby squeegee. It still hurts. Stay away. Put a sprinkler there. I don't really care about it. Not shooting a sprinkler is something that I would actually say is kind of an advanced gameplay tip because I feel like everybody just gets kind of annoyed by the fact that a drone is spraying ink around that they'll usually shoot it even if there's far more pertinent things to do in the current moment. Uh, I see a lot of rookie players make that mistake and even some advanced players make that mistake where they just see a sprinkler and they want to destroy it because it's there. there go, go there, grab that. Nothing? Huh. Nothing? Okay. Grab all of that. This better have something good in it. Hard to get rewards generally are not disappointing. Okay, that one kind of was. Coming over here. Coming over here. Coming over here. I I'm making a big mess over here. Huh? 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 You see me being a dirty boy? Huh? Does that entice you any, mommy? That was. Get get over here. Come on. Come on, you know you want to. You know you want to clean my room and take away my Nintendo Switch and tell me we're not going to Chuck E. Cheese. Okay, this is getting weird. It's a freaking squeegee for crying out loud. <laughs> that, oh, a Sardinium. Okay, I know how to get that. Pop you, pop you, and pop you. And then, there is a safe here. Find the key. Down there, perhaps? That's pretty well hidden. Nope, not there. Gotta be more clever than that. We want to hit this gusher. Aha, I think there's the peoples. Okay, I'm gonna trust that we have to go over this way because I'm not finding it no matter where I'm going. Hit you, hit that. Nothing, nothing. It's gotta be around here. Oh, there's the... Don Key Kong! Found it at last. We got a squeegee there that's got a tower. We'll grab that. Oh, this was just on the required path anyway, so I didn't even need to. And the way that I thought I grabbed it wasn't the way I grabbed it at all. I thought I was gonna have to get the industrial squeegee out, 
get on top of it and then ride it there. Run! I suppose that's a way that you might be able to do it by getting up on top of this or using the gushers to ascend though, but no, nah, it was more simple than I thought. Here I thought that was a secret and not on the required path. Huh. I have to say, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, I kind of don't like the glitter in the ink inside of Octocannon. I think it's a little bit too much where you see those little bits of glitter there. That only happens in Octocannon, and I remember when I came in here my first day with the game, because I couldn't do versus battles right away, I was worried that the whole game looked like that because I thought it looked kind of tacky. I'm kind of hoping that's not the case in whatever Splatoon 3's version of Octocannon is. <laughs> the way his mouth was just flopping op uh, open and closed there was funny. That. I want the other bomb for this. Oh, here we go. Hell, I rain cleanliness from above! <laughs> okay, he's dead. Uh, I don't have to ride this guy the entire way. I can do it to kill the enemies, I guess. This guy's just got a useless balloon on him. And I think I'm just gonna get the hell out of Dodge. Uh, I can trust this guy to take care of the rest. Still haven't found the sunken scroll. I hope it's nearby. I was hoping it was gonna be that so I could be like, oh look, the sunken scroll, but nope. Uh, I'm gonna look around here a little more closely before moving onward, because I feel like on the other side of one of these pillars would be where it would be hidden. I failed to find a thing, which tells me it's earlier in the stage somewhere. Uh, do I have to go get the Zatfish Marie? It feels like such a hollow victory. Oh, -ho! at the end of the second area with an industrial strength squeegee, which you will see momentarily for a visual aid. Yes, this place. I'm not nearly as embarrassed for missing that one like I was before. I was worried I was losing my touch and missing the easy secrets after what happened last time. Got my plushie here, using it to soak up my armpit sweat. Many travelers find themselves in Inkopolis Square at some point in their journey. Youth from far off seas gather in this colorful hub of comings, goings, meetings, and farewells. This specific sunken scroll didn't make a whole lot of sense at launch. We found out due to an official blog post on the Splatoon 2 Tumblr page that Flo's backstory and how she ended up in Inkopolis was that she was on holiday here and she wound up being offered a job in a strange city. She moved here because she believes in fate. Much to Crayman's chagrin. That's that. Uh, here we go. Gotta hit this. Oh, they're moving now. Ooh, they're up in the difficulty. On oh, now we gotta shoot two balloons instead of just one. Look at that. If we fail this, we... Oh, whoa, okay. I probably shouldn't be getting ahead of myself talking about what's gonna happen if we fail because uh, I don't know yet. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. I guess I can talk about what I wanted to say now. Uh, Marie! Marie! Marie, look out! I should've known you had it. Had you go in there, didn't I? Uh, you gonna, you gonna talk to me? Are, are we still on talking terms? You're, you're not mad about the whole body fluids incident, are you? If you're hurt or overwhelmed, retreat and catch your breath. That's the first rule of battle. I sure hope you're not afraid of heights, Agent 4. You know how to, you know you remind me of Agent 3. If Agent 3 were like two years older and practice basic catching, okay, we're just seeing repeats now. Hit it, hit it. What I'm saying is, should we fail this, we do have an advantage the second time around from already coloring in the turf that is needed to get to the next balloon. Do that, do that, do that. Uh, wait, what? Excuse, what? What? Why did it? I've never seen that happen before. Why did it warp under the ground? I guess I was around John earlier today. Maybe he like sweat on me or got some spit on me. Why did you warp through the ground? It's not supposed to do that. That's what it does. You also saw it fly away when I failed. So it's really not supposed to do that. Uh-oh, uh, that's not good, that's not good, that's not good. Gotta ink the turf. Sunken scroll numero dos. That just gives us a commemorative sticker for having visited a uh, suction cup lookout? Suction cup lookout, is that it? Uh, suction cup lookout, I was right. I had the area correct. 
With all that done, it's time we let Joe take a little rest here from being the hero, and we let the big boy take over. Back to Inkopolis Square. What's this? Today's topic is not in Inkopolis. It is in... In an iPhone! Run for your lives! Yeah, the Nintendo Switch online app. Hold, hold your booze for later. Splatoon 2 has a section in the Nintendo Switch online app, possibly not for much longer. Inside of this app are numerous little utilities available for you. It'll show you your ranks, it'll show you how much turf you have inked, um, inside of Machu Picchu, I'll get to that a little later. You get a lot of general overview on the first page. On the second tab, stages. You can see what the current map rotation is and what it's going to be in the next 24 hours. Hmm. Okay, so if I want to play on Blackbelly Skate Park, all I gotta do is stay up until 3 a.m. Oh boy, 3 a.m.? My stats shows how much ink you have inked as an inkling and as an octoling. We'll get into that another time, but basically inklings ink outdoor locations. I have inked all of Machu Picchu, uh, Central Park, I passed through that. In certain milestones you get wallpapers, which you can find on the Splatoon wiki just fine without having to do this, but they can be downloaded to your phone. Uh, I kind of like this. I had this as my phone background for a while. Octolings ink indoor areas, sort of thematic with what their lots in life have been. You'll understand later. I have inked the Large Hadron Collider, and I remember the media circus where people were saying that that was going to form a black hole and kill us all and suck up the earth into it. And I remember I was like 17 when that was going on, and I was horrified and scared to death and had nightmares about it. <sighs> Did not like that very much. You can view individual weapon stats, seeing how much ink you have turfed with each weapon. You can view this in-game as well. I don't really know why this is here. That whole raw, dry, 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 dry desert. All of that is available in-game if you've selected the weapon, so this is a slightly more convenient place to see it, but I doubt you really care about Turf Wars rank and showing that off to other people. Every tab is a refresh button that I've just tapped. You can see that spinning around. It looks like a spawn point. In case you've changed your stats and want to see it again. You can view some other things, like the Rank X leaderboard. Um, it still has stuff for the Splatfests in here. I didn't play very much of the final Splatfest that they did, actually. Uh, League Battles, I have played very few times, so you can see that. Agent 4 status. Yeah, there's a single player rank. I'm pretty highly ranked in it, if I do say so myself. Um, you can all see your disconnects. Uh, that is helpful information to know because too many disconnects and it will start kicking you out of games and telling you that, hey bud, get your internet in order or you're not playing. They have measures to prevent people from gaming the system, disconnecting and all that, because uh, ranks are not affected as heavily if somebody disconnected. Battles. Believe it or not, I actually do win more than I lose. Not by much, though. You can see your last 50 battles and how well they have gone. You can see what weapons I have been capturing footage for lately at the time of recording this. Immersion broken! And the last tab is Salmon Run. We've yet to go over this, but you can see if Salmon Run is available to play, what your total cumulative stats are. Again, this isn't a thing that I see most people rushing out to show their ranks for. It's not particularly helpful. What is particularly helpful, however, is back on the front page, this graphic, this little graphic in the upper right that doesn't even look like you should be able to tap on it, it just looks like part of the background. You tap on that, and you go to the Splatnet gear shop. This used to be on the bottom bar and a lot more obviously you could tap on it. I remember thinking in an update that they removed it and I was so upset when I learned, oh, they just made it blending with the back. Why would you change that? It changed it for the worst. These abilities are not great on these pieces of equipment, but uh, like main slot of bomb defense up, main slot of quick super jump. Here we got some main slots of swim speed up and run speed up. What I'm gonna do is I'll order this hula punk shirt. It's gonna cost 10,000 cash. Yeah, I'll make a new order. By going and checking in with all merch, look at that! It's this topic coming back. Splatnet order! Hey, the stuff you ordered from Annie was just delivered. Wanna buy it? For 10,000 cash? Psh, you already have that same gear. You know the rules. Which one do you wanna keep? We have Ink Saver main and two slots of bomb defense up. I could buy this new gear and get a different main ability on that gear. That's right. With the Splatnet shop on your phone, you can have any main ability on any piece of equipment, with only a few limitations. The only limitations are that you will never see a piece of equipment with the same brand affinity and main ability. So, for instance, Krakon is increased chances of swim speed up. You will never see a Krakon piece of equipment that has swim speed up as its main ability, sort of playing into the whole diminishing returns thing, where they don't want you stacking just one ability over and over again. 
The second limitation is event items and amiibo items you will never see in there. However, there are two items only available by default in the Splatnet store, and the alternate variants are purchased at Shell Afresh instead. It's these Nike shoe tie-ins. Heh, <laughs> get it? Shoe tie-in? <laughs> You've probably seen these Nike sneakers around places. I know I see people out in public wearing them all the time, and whenever I notice them out of the corner of my eye, I just think, oh, the Splatoon shoes, because I have them in this game, and I've worn them a lot over the years, and I just... It's kind of a funny case where I have an affinity for this shoe I have never worn, uh, just because it's won battles for me in Splatoon, and I've worked it into my builds. That can only be gotten in the Splatnet shop. I'm presuming that if they ever wanted to sell Splatoon 2 on another system again in the future, they didn't want to have to bother to go in and remove a Nike tie-in, so they just decided to have it in the mobile app. That's the only explanation. I can personally think of. Before you take on a new piece of equipment, absolutely go and scrub the slots on it. I do this by sorting by main ability and going to my ink saver main items, which I do not have a lot of, and I can pay 20,000 cash to have this scrubbed, getting those two ability chunks off of it. Otherwise, they go to waste. You don't get the ability chunks from buying a Splatnet item and overwriting it. I'll take that. Word. Nice doing business. Merch mentioned somebody named Annie delivered the items that we ordered. Annie was the shopkeeper of the headgear shop in Splatoon 1. Her job has changed like so many others. On the note of your replacement, this symbol does not mean that your equipment is retweet worthy. <laughs> You've got a piece of gear we carry that has a different primary ability. Wanna trade it in? This also flow is totally just leukogen, I'm just saying. You can see which main ability you already have. Again, I recommend scrubbing before replacing it. Um, this will show you if a piece of gear is for sale that has a different main ability than what you've got. I think, personally, main slots of sub power up, main slots of bomb defense, and quick super jump, those are pretty terrible abilities to have uh, on main slots. I would absolutely overwrite any of those. The final feature of Splatnet 2 is, or was, the online lounge. Despite the cool colors of the background, you now get this message showing that service for it has come to an end. It just encourages you to use the standard voice chat mode from your phone, not from within the game, and you can no longer invite people to games from this as the Switch has game inviting as a standard feature anyway. I've taught you another way that you can earn that equipment that you so richly want, but don't deserve. With that all done, let's meet a brand new weapon class and see what we're gonna be fighting with today. Huh, hello Frisk. New weapon class in the form of extreme buckets. Slashers are a more tactical cousin of shooters with a manual fire that throws ink up before it splashes down. The trajectory obeys physics and can be aimed up to attack from behind walls or to hit marks on top of ledges. Slasher attacks in general are very committal, coming up slowly and have next to no straving speed while attacking. In addition, most sloshers attack in a very straight line and require practice to not be strafed out. Thankfully, the ink is generated in just the right way that fighting normally is likely to ink the holder's feet, which is a much appreciated trait on something that has to aim up and attack slowly. No shooting at the ground in order to escape here. This particular slosher has pretty decent range compared to the long-range shooters and is very capable of being sneaky from behind objects. Aiming straight gets the most out of the range and lots of ink to swim through, while aiming high is advice for close range. A standard hit is 70 damage. Due to the unorthodox way of launching bodily fluids, damage is calculated in very different ways from all other weapons. There is no damage falloff based on distance, but there's significant falloff based on how far the ink falls below the player, bottoming out at 30 damage. Generally, it still comes out to a two-hit KO. 70 is just a high-powered hit, and it has to have some kind of downside. This isn't to say that attacking from the high ground is bad. It's something sloshers can do very well. It just gets a slight nerf from doing it. Attacking outside the enemy's range in any way possible has great value since one-hit kill weapons like rollers and blasters make quick work of sloshers. When sneak attacking, it's most efficient to aim high on the first attack and then aim level for the second. The sloshes combo into one another, giving it a super fast time to splat with very little time to react. Plus, they coat the enemy in enemy ink on hit number one. I have to credit Captain Astronaut with the term super slosh and slam jam for that one. Its sub-weapon is Suction Bomb! Good sub weapon, good, good sub weapon here. Of course, it forces movement away from choke points, giving you the initiative, but remember that the minimum damage of suction bombs is 30 from a direct hit, and a level slosh is 70. The throwing range is far greater than the slosh. The more I say that, the more it sounds like a club, the slosh. Anyway, it's a combo that makes far more kills possible. 
Just be careful of ink consumption. Suction bombs are 70% while one slosh is 7%. It's likely to get empty from a full tank after taking out just one enemy. Special weapon is the Tenta Missiles! Ah, Tenta Missiles on a great main sub combination. Seeing a pattern here? It's like they knew they had to give these weapons indirect specials to make them not all ultimately powerful. Sloshers are usually behind a wall or up on a ledge, so it thankfully has a little synergy with the rest of the kit, unlike a lot of other Tenta Missile weapons. The missiles shut down statue-like enemies for a few seconds, while the suction bomb keeps the other team away from objectives. From these points, the standard slosher is a very all-around weapon that can handle multiple types of situations and is geared for very tactical attacks between all three parts of the kit. Though it's weak in direct fights with one-hit kill weapons, it's great at flushing out enemies or using its deceptively good range to attack from out of reach. Aside from painting your own shoes, the slosher is good at turfing and can coat a zone while the other parts keep the other team away from the zone. The effective main power-up on sloshers is less damage fall-off when attacking enemies below. Not super important. I'd like to recommend Ink Saver sub pretty highly here. Just a little bit of this can mean one additional slosh from that suction bomb. And now I ask you, what could be worse than a giant paint bucket? Two giant paint buckets! It's the Slosher Deco! Its sub-weapon is Sprinkler. Not a whole lot to say here. It builds the special faster, is a good use of ink when there's nothing else to do, and useful bait because enemies often shoot at sprinklers even if it's not prudent. Otherwise, that just means more access to the baller! Of course, between the main weapon being good at painting and the sub giving more frequent specials, the cost had to be high, and this is by far the highest baller cost in the entire game at 220 points. That's not to say this is a bad baller weapon. It's one of the best. It's just not quite as free with the specials as it seems at first glance. With the slosher enjoying high vantage points and the baller able to score such easy kill dropping onto heads, this is a pretty good combo. There's not a whole lot beyond that. Sometimes it's a slosher, sometimes it's a baller. The duality of those two allow it to do something in many different times, and this is a favored pick in Clam Blitz. With this combo, you're likely to rank out of the low ranks in Clam Blitz in no time. I would say for abilities, Special Charge Up is more important on this kit than it was on the Vanilla Slosher. Getting more frequent ballers is the whole reason to play this weapon. And we got a third one! The Soda Slosher! Yellow, huh? Didn't know we were launching that body fluid at people. Its sub-weapon is the Splat Bomb! What, no fizzy bomb? Uh, anyway, good strong sub-weapon for it. Splat Bomb on its own is definitely one of the best sub-weapons in all sorts of different maps and modes. The pairing that it hits for exactly 30 minimum damage and the splash area for bombs is huge, this is a deadly combo when combined with the 70 slosh damage. Both parts can even hit at the same time, just be mindful of bomb defense up, mitigating this slightly. Since it can hit over objects, pre-firing into opponents so they can't see it coming has never been easier. As long as it's got the initiative, it's very easy to land a quick kill, making this a little more capable of dealing with those mean old one-hit kill weapons. Of course, Splat Bombs are good spacing tools when being rushed down, further helping the Slosher's vulnerabilities when using its regular attack. Its special weapon is... a new one! Yeah! The Burst Bomb Launcher! This is tied for being the rarest special in the game. Only this and a Bamboozler have it. For a base duration of 6 seconds, the player is allowed to freely launch up to 17 burst bombs, the most of any bomb launcher to make up for its low damage. Just so it's clear, every bomb launcher is left-handed and they are the only left-handed attacks in the game. And thus, this cannot work around the same corners that other attackers would. The special has two uses, being able to annoy and pressure outside the normal sloshing range, and being able to coat lots of ground rapidly, since the slosher is vulnerable against long range and likes to play in the center of the map. This is a pretty great special for it. All of this combined with its rarity, and those are reasons to pick the soda slosher for your next battle alone. Of the two weapons that have it, this is 200 points versus the bamboozler's 160, but of course, a slosher is far better at turfing to make up for it. Thanks to the high painting prowess, I want to recommend Splat Zones as the big mode to play this one in. It seems most geared for that purpose. Matching that in the equipment section, Last Ditch Effort is a better ability on it with it being geared for Splat Zones. I could also recommend running lots of little abilities like Quick Super Jump just to make up for the fact there aren't really a lot of abilities to recommend for this one. Where are we gonna be sloshing around inside of today? Regular stages are Snapper Canal and Piranha Pits. I accidentally stepped on one of the conveyor belts here. It wasn't pretty. We've heard that one before. Tentacle! 
Tentacle! Have you ever thought it sounded like they were saying tentacle at the end there? It's because they are. Their Japanese name is Tentacles. How creative, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! I am the basketball janitor. I sort of have that vibe going on with the shoes and the hoodie. I guess maybe in the winter time. Yeah, I'll go with that. The basketball janitor. So I chose not to show that first game, yet I kind of wonder if we just want to disconnect. We. <laughs> Y'all should be ashamed of yourself. Somebody disconnected at the very beginning of the game. I saw them poof out of existence. Yeah, he got two kills and then he just decided he was done for the day. We didn't really need him. Oh, his head was hurting. Okay, so I, I understand. Snapper Canal, game one, here we go. Snapper Canal is a pretty unique map in terms of its layout. One critique that I used to see of Splatoon 2 is a lot of the early maps that were introduced were samey in their layouts. Snapper Canal was the exception. You have the titular canal in the middle dividing up the center of the map, only coming together in the very center. Movement around this map is quite different. Weapons have to think about their positioning a lot differently. And, uh, you know, you got perches up here for snipers that are around the center and all that stuff, though. But I don't know, I just kind of liked how it funnels this. Specifically in tower control, I like this map a lot, just because you have to pass over the water in order to reach the objective, and there's a lot of jump making. It's a platform-heavy stage. Saw you there. You were doing the thing that I was saying, talking about earlier, where uh, people like hiding on uninkable surfaces because people expect them to never be there. That guy just kind of hung out there. I decided to go with the soda slosher because I got a slight affinity for it. I know it looks like a pee bucket, but I don't know. I kind of like the guy. It's part of the charm. And then there's also the fact that oh whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. somehow I survived that encounter. Um. I was saying that I can't imagine that I'll ever be using a burst bomb launcher ever again in any context if I have to use a bamboozler to get it. I have the high ground! It's not Daniel, it's just Danny with an exclamation mark at the end of it. That looks quite messy, and not in the good kind of way. I'm not making the good kind of mess. Uh, I could not make that throw. Uh, I'm just not gonna challenge that guy. He would see me coming a mile away, because I am a mile away. Hi! Using my long range, good. You are a lot longer range than other shooter than uh, shooter weapons are, so that's definitely an advantage to take advantage of with this. I got this to attack from up on, just getting a lot of points from on high. That was an auto bomb. Not a deceptive bomb. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Oh, no, 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 no! Ah, I ran out of ink. Getting stalled by umbrella just freaking sucks. It's so rough. We might lose this after I just want to disconnect. Here I'm hyping myself up and I'm like, look at me, I want another disconnect, and then... Uh, oh, no you don't. Going back for a second, that's the thing. Good umbrellas are rare, but they are scary when you come across them. Where are we? All four of us are alive. It's not like we have a disconnect or anything like that. Let's see all that just fine. I'm about to get my special, so it's gonna be time for big last second points. Yes, okay, good. You don't make me jinx myself. Booyah! I think I'll probably color in over here. Oh, no, you don't. 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 No, 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 I'm not sure about that. I think we took it. Booyah! I didn't even booyah at the beginning of that game. I gotta work on that. Spin that bucket around in your finger. I really do look like a basketball player. And then just sit on the ball. Kirby, I'm here. The door is open. You can stop crying. Piranha Pit once more. 
We got the jellyfish doing the monkey bars up there. Fun fact, if you're wondering what the deal is with all those jellyfish that are always around, they're spectators. They don't have ink sacs on their bodies, so a lot of jellyfish are just fans of turf wars rather than actually partaking in it. So you see them always playing around on the sides of the map, just kind of trying to catch a glimpse of the extreme sports. I'm gonna use my range and ink throwing capabilities here to just ink up the sides of the map. The sides in Piranha Pit can add up to a lot of turf inked, and that can actually decide the game more than the center does sometimes. So I'm just gonna pick up some points, get my special built up, contribute a different way here. I like showing alternate ways of contributing. I like using my burst bomb, nice, good. Got that win there because I had my special, so I didn't do any direct confrontation early on, but I was rewarded for it in the end. Gonna throw my ink down onto people's heads there, taking advantage of my interesting and unique properties. I think it's time for a bomb. Okay, we lure that guy out. He's coming over here. No. Uh, where did they go? Attack him. Ah! Oh, I thought I had it. They weaved around my sloshes. Looks like Steve from Blue's Clues. Uh, Steve at perhaps. <laughs> So, the thing about uh, about this weapon, uh, whenever I play sloshes, I find that I tend to not have a lot of diversity in my abilities that I equip. Generally, you want to equip a lot of different abilities and just a little bit of each one. You can't really do that here. Run speed doesn't help sloshers much because their speed is basically nothing when they're sloshing. And they're just not helped out by that many things. It's just ink saver sub, swim speed up. Uh, I decided to throw in a bit of quick respawn just because I had nothing else that I could even equip. It's kind of cruddy, actually. Uh, here, we can just do this. Just rain down destruction from the heavens. Or from the ground, too. That's fine. I better watch myself. I'm not on the yellow team as a soda slosher anymore. I think that cuts my power by at least half. Not dead. Oh, no. Oh, no. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. We are down so much. Why are we down so much? I guess the explosion is kind of an unwieldy weapon. I can see that being hard for people to... Manage. I can't wait till I can play that weapon. I haven't played it in so long, and I, I like it a lot, that combination of burst bomb with that shot. Let me get up here. I'm trying to be wary about getting out into these crates, because if you do, you're a sitting duck for a lot of different attacks. I don't want to go too far out. We have been in danger this entire game. Can we get out of it, maybe? I need to build up my special link from yesterday. I'm gonna pull it off. Uh... Swing your missiles, do -si do Just what it feels like, just going through some kind of dance every time. Pop, 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 pop. Go over here, gonna throw those. I'm all out of special juice. I got the win there. I was playing pretty good early on. But you know what they say, early on only counts in splat zones. Maybe? Maybe? Hmm. They got the sides pretty good. We got the middle, though. No. Nah. Wow! Yikes. That's a deceptive electoral map if I've ever seen one. I got first place on my team. Three kills, three specials. That was okay. I chose to level up some equipment while I was at it because, again, I was just so limited. Ah! You know, that's a good piece of equipment. All three of those are fantastic abilities to have exactly one slot of. That's another reason why around here we dislike pure equipment. That's a versatile piece that's just a good shirt to bring into any fight. Swim speed up is even the most consistently helpful ability to have on a main slot. It's perfect. Might not have gotten the second win, but I got that, and that's definitely going to equate to some wins later. I think for now, though, that's going to be it. Next time on Splatoon 2! Oh, we're covering a turfing specialist. Okay. It's a weapon that I feel a lot of new players tend to gravitate towards. See you guys then!